airports are very multifaceted places. Um, of course, it's all about the passenger uh, getting through as seamlessly and efficiently from their point of arrival to departure or, or vice versa. We, of course, also need to uh, consider the operators and the owners um, of the airports. Uh, airports themselves can be quite complex uh, from a procedural uh, point of view, uh, with over sort of 8 million people a day uh, flying uh, globally. Um, it's obviously quite a big industry these days. From our side, we think it's very much about the emotional side of the passenger experience. Um, they can be very, very emotional places. They can be very stressful uh, places. Um, airport projects themselves are also very long uh, timelines and programs uh, from the commencement, be it a refurbishment or a, or a new build. Uh, so from our point of view, we also think they should be very timeless. Um, we, we don't, as they take so long to, to, to get through, uh, we don't want these airports to be dated by the time they actually come to fruition. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, airports should also be very clutter-free. Um, again, going back to the passenger experience and the passenger journey, people want to be able to get through as seamlessly and as quickly and as efficiently as they possibly can. Our job as interior designers is to aid that process, to get them through the airport, give them the very easy, uh, intuitive wayfinding or gestures within the space or the spaces within the space to get to where they need to get to very quickly and efficiently. To aid this, we often suggest a large gesture um, at the beginning uh, of the experience for the passenger, something that they can recognize instantly. Um, if someone, if you can evoke a positive emotion as soon as you arrive at an airport, we, we tend it, 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 it uh, helps the passenger uh, relax immediately. And once they understand this big gesture, um, we can then start to add sort of smaller gestures throughout the airport and the passengers then start to understand the rhythm of the airport and the rhythm of the experience they're about to go through. So obviously the airport industry has changed a lot over the last 30 years. Um, aviation has grown. Uh, 30 years, 40 years ago, it was very much the privileged few, if you like, traveling. Um, it was a major uh, expedition to go from, say, the UK to, to Singapore uh, with multi-stops along the way. This day and age, obviously people are traveling more. It, it's more, people want quick, they want efficiencies. Um, Airports always used to be very social spaces too. Um, we're working on a project at the moment in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, this was an iconic building designed in the 1960s and finished in the 1970s. Great ongoing airport, amazing architecture. When it was designed, it had these spaces uh, called Oasis in the desert. Um, they were designed so people would actually go out, families would go there, they would take their teas and their coffees uh, over a weekend. Um, but obviously as security has been enhanced, and correctly so, and more and more people are traveling, the social side of travel has been taken away. Um, what we're starting to find as technology has advanced and as um, <clears throat> technology enables uh, security to be improved, we're starting to see how people are actually trying to bring back uh, the social aspect into air travel. And why shouldn't they be? The more people you can have at airports, from a passenger point of view, if, you're, if someone's leaving you for, for a holiday or an extended trip or emigrating, going back to the emotional side, you want to be able to sense, spend those last few moments with them in a happy space. Of course, for the operators and the owners, it's, it's a positive return on their investment because you're starting to be able to bring in, say, more retail areas or more F&B areas. So we're finding it's becoming quite a 360 uh, turnaround at the moment and going very much back to a social uh, part of air travel.